Hey, hey, people. If, if you even are people. Welcome back to Furyrike, a mod that was updated not too long ago to finally be compatible with No Step Back. The update that was released last November. I was honestly surprised that this mod updated at all, but I am glad that it did update because it is a classic mod. It's a fun mod. It's not what you think of as an overhaul mod in 2022. It's more of the classic Kaiser Reich overhaul mod, if that makes sense. We'll play as France today. I don't think I've played as France in Fear Reich before, and they're probably the best country to play as besides Germany. Actually, never mind. We're not gonna play as France. France is actually a kind of boring country to play as. We're gonna play as Poland. They're probably the best country to play as besides Germany. It's pretty fun. They're in a fun situation. See, we don't own Danzig or Konigsberg or anything really, but we are strong, Poland. I'll prove that soon. We can't do any focuses yet. We, we might have to wait for someone to die or an election, something. And I don't know why there's this exclamation mark. I don't know if this is like a vanilla Hoi 4 thing or it's a Fear Reich thing, but I don't think I've ever seen it before. Oh, it's a maximum supported division mechanic, and we start off with more divisions than the maximum supported divisions. That's, ah, uh, that's uh, what I like to call a nice design flaw. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be that way on purpose. So yeah, we were given our independence because of the Treaty of Versailles, and now we are a semi-democratic monarchy. Again, I explained this many, many times. I've become an expert at explaining this, but Führerreich is what Kaiserreich Germany thought would happen if they lost World War One, which they really did lose World War One. but this is from the perspective of Germany that won World War One. if they thinking about what, how, how, what happened if they lost World War One, it's, it's common sense. Anyways, this civilian factory is building, it'll be built, and I, it's thinking about August 1st or August 30th. It seems like it's settled on August 1st. Oh, someone died. Does that mean we can do our focus tree? I don't, yeah, wait, yep, yep. It does. It's so common. It's it's what everybody does. And there he goes. King George is also dead. Lots of people existing only to die and unlock their focus tree. Great comment. I mean, I came up with that line myself. Either way, we will be soon taking over the very adorable kingdom of Lithuania. Oh wait, they're already our puppet. <laughs> Never mind. We, we already control the, the kingdom of Lithuania, but we'll be taking over the very cute kingdom of Latvia. Hey, and look, it's a face I haven't seen in so long. It was the original vanilla communist Spain leader. I haven't seen that guy in a long time. I kind of miss him, honestly. Also, what is this? I swear I've never seen this before. Also, in this mod, Britain gets a very, very unfair amount of power. They already start off very powerful, and while we all fight here in the continent, they just go around taking over whatever they want. It's very unfair. They don't have to play by the rules. They get an exception from the war. They own Ireland. They own Iraq, too. They just own everything, and then they just take over more stuff. Well, and what do we do? We, we sit here as a landlocked country and have to do actual diplomacy and keep the balance of power in Europe while they go play their silly colonial games. They better help us. And the French Republic suggests that we recognize the Soviet Union as the legitimate Russian government? <laughs> is, does that sound like something that Poland would ever do? They're foolish to even ask us. I, I feel less aligned with the French because they requested we do this. And it's now time to overthrow the monarchy because if we can't have a bear as king, no one should be king. And I like having this random blank leader portrait as our leader. That's that's how I like things. And now welcome to a new republic. Uh, this focus doesn't have any effects, but we have to do it to get to other focuses and replace this guy. Also, Portugal has entered its infinite war with their colonies. If I remember correctly, this war will never end. And whose side should we send volunteers to? Britain or the Indian Revolt? The Indian Revolt is sided with Germany, who is, well, may, may be sided with Germany, um, who's going to be our natural enemy 
And Britain has the same ideology as us, but I kind of have a grudge against them, so it's gonna be a tough decision, but I think we're gonna send volunteers to Britain, just because then we can send volunteers to Britain and all of their puppet states and send a ton of volunteers over there by exploiting the system, so <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll just keep making detachments of two divisions and send those detachments to Britain and every single one of its puppet states until our entire army is fighting on the side of Britain, but strategically prolonging the war so that we can, um, you know, get a lot of army experience. Hmm, so if we get this advisor, we get plus four volunteers for every single country involved in this thing, which would make it very easy to send our entire army over, but I, I don't think that's quite worth it, so we will get the stability guy. Maybe in an alternate world that would have been worth it, but even if we sent all those divisions over, there's just not enough army experience to be gained. It's not worth it. Also, yeah, the London stock market crashed. Also, we're going to adopt the new radical ideology of centrism. Yes, centrism. I know it's scary, but you will have to accept it. Also, Brazil is having a communist revolt. Italy is having a Volkist revolt. See, instead of workers' democracies and representation and better working conditions, we're pushing for the moderate, just okay working conditions. See, we're not crazy. We're not gonna give you great working conditions. We're just going to give you okay conditions. I know it's a radical idea, but it's an idea that you will accept. Maybe we should fix the economy first, or we can restart the economy. Ah, oh, there's so many things we can do. Or we could get a war call against Romania. Oh, never mind. To do this focus, we we can't be centrist. Anyways, time to start doing some war propaganda. And Britain, wow, what an impressive act of humility. They let Indonesia go free without even really a fight. They could have taken them if they wanted to, but they're just so good that they let them go. That gives me some more faith in the British. Maybe they aren't as bad as I thought they were. Now we're going through an event chain about bank robbers. This is, uh, um, now we're doing encirclements. These will be expert Polish divisions by the time we get into a conflict ourselves. What if we can win this war for them? That would be very funny. I think we might be able to do it. Okay, and this, this is the best thing that happens in this mod. So Britain fought that, um, civil war in India for a year and a half, and then after they win, they let India go free with the same guy they were fighting against for a year and a half as the leader. That's the best part of Führer, right? <laughs> if anybody else says that anything else is better, no, that's that's the best part. And we've encircled, I can say, a lot of divisions here. Uh, the thing is, the Soviets don't have any supply hubs here, and we don't have any supply hubs here, and France and Italy are both building uh, bunkers in me so that we can defend against Germany. Germany. I didn't look where the bunkers were, but hopefully they're building them in good places. I don't really see them anywhere. Also, we now have the same amount of civilian factories as Germany has. They have a lot more dockyards and military factories, but our civilian economy is doing great. Uh, we better start building mills, though. We've also finally re-secured this river line for them, so hopefully they keep holding on indefinitely, and then we will never have to face an enemy to the east. And they also exist to the west because the Czechs are in a faction with them, but I don't think that will be a problem. We have now joined the Continental Entente, and I know what you're thinking. I should have made my own cool faction in the east with all these Eastern European friends, but no, it's it's not a good idea. If you do that, you can't buy Madagascar, and buying Madagascar is very important. It's, um, it's vital to our survival as Poland. So yeah, we need to keep that option open. We're also gonna build a lot of trains because we didn't start off with trains, so we need to build a lot of those so that we can get supply. Oh, and I thought the battle was going to begin, but Germany just annexed the Rhine and this event. Um, we got quite a few copies of this event. It, it is a very important event after all, so there is some need to give us a lot of copies just to make sure that we actually read it and realize that it's an event that exists. Well, that is kind of a relief though, because now I can 
can stop mass producing civilian trains since we were still a little low on those and I thought we were going into battle right then. Also, for some reason, the railroads in our country aren't connected, so I probably should build these up. This is a really terrible state of the railroads. I am now going to make a flamethrower tank and we're going to soon have max military factories in all of our states and our puppets states. So soon we're going to be able to build max level land forts across our entire border with Germany. And we will have this fortress Poland bonus that'll give us plus 20% land fort construction speed so it'll be a great, easy, cheap investment for us to build infinite land forts everywhere. We'll see. Will we build them before the war? Probably not, but we can try. Oh no, and this is a nightmare. France has no supply in Alsace, and the Maginot doesn't really, really exist in this timeline. They still have some forts there, but yeah, this isn't good. I think we need to join them, but I don't think our army is ready. I don't know if we have much of a choice though. I guess at least Romania and Bulgaria are in our faction. That's kind of nice. I guess we could we could join and fight against Slovakia and try to capitulate them. And as always, this mod is perfectly crazy. So the Soviets are now at war with everybody. Other than that, we've had some success. They're mounting a good defense in Danzig. Slovakia is too powerful with the mountains. Serbia has also joined Germany, but Italy and Serbia aren't at war yet for some reason. The Hellenic Republic has joined us, the Ottomans have joined Germany, and I say the Hellenic Republic has joined us, but they have not joined our faction. They're just on our side in the conflict. Yeah, but either way, things are going well, except our undefended border with the Soviets and our undefended border with the Czech Republic. But it should be fine. Germany's kind of falling to the Italians and the French and the Belgians. And I was really mad that we couldn't clear this up so I've tricked them to move all their divisions outside of Danzig so now we will take this port and then they will be encircled. <laughs> yeah my evil plan finally completing. That was great we just had to give them an opportunity to leave and they took it. They hate that city. Uh, the party is back together at last. The United Kingdom has joined the Entente and the Continental Entente is reborn as the Entente. Written I knew they wouldn't let us down. We will now kick Sweden out of our glorious Lithuanian puppet state and then finish this thing off. So here's the current state of affairs in Poland. We lost some of our southern territory but have taken Berlin. We kicked Germany out of Königsberg again. We're working towards incorporating Lithuania finally. All these German divisions are pretty much encircled. Their capital is down here and is very well defended, so I don't think we will capitulate Germany until we take out the Czech Socialist Republic, who's also at war with Germany, but until we take them out, we can't fully surround them. Germany is in the same faction as Siam in Japan though, so we will have to capitulate both of them since they are majors. With Britain on our side, it won't be too hard, but we, this is going to be a long, long conflict. We'll have to invade Sweden, we'll have to push all the way through the Soviet Union and then naval invade Japan with help from Britain's navy. It's going to be a long adventure. And Germany has finally raised the white flag. Sweden has also been invaded by Italy, which was incredibly embarrassing, and then Great Britain just to prove that it's better than Italy, also did their own naval invasion above Italy's naval invasion. But yeah, other than that, things are going well in Europe. But uh, that, that's where I'll end it here. Um, if you guys want to see more, I can play on further. But this is basically the end because we've already won, I guess. I can do a victory lap if you want. Either way, see you all next time.